If you bought a power station like this very robust Egritech Sonic 1200 watt, you probably bought it to protect yourself during a power outage and then use other things like running stuff while you're camping or power tools in the backyard as an added benefit. So let's dig in. How long will a power station like this keep a full-size fridge running? Well, let's get into the facts in terms of food safety and do a little bit of math to figure out whether this can run more than the seven and a half hours that the manufacturer says it can run this fridge. Because I think I've got a way to more than double that. So let's get into the facts. So first thing is the USDA recommends that you keep your food be at underneath 40 degrees Fahrenheit and that food becomes unsafe in your refrigerator once it hits 45 and above. Now, in terms of cooling, Samsung, when I looked it up, says that from room temperature to that 40 degrees, it's going to take about eight hours to get there. So when you do the math, that means that a typical fridge will reduce temperature about 4.4 degrees per hour or 1.1 degrees per 15 minutes. Remember that number, because that's important. Now, the Red Cross says that during a power outage, the food inside your fridge can stay good for about four hours. So when we go from that 38 degrees up to the 45 unsafe level, well, that's seven degrees, and that means that your freezer or your refrigerator defrost gets hotter at about 1.7 degrees per hour. And the Red Cross also said that you really don't need to worry about your freezer because if it's full, it'll stay good for 45, uh, 48 hours. So let's focus on keeping the food safe in the refrigerator side of this unit. So now, Egritech said, as I mentioned, that this unit, 1200 watts, will run this fridge for about seven and a half hours. Well, that's not going to span a night. You know, how are you going to keep this thing running for more than seven and a half hours in the dark? Well, every brand is a little bit different. So when you look at seven and a half hours, that's 15 30 minute blocks. And so what my idea is, is we put a timer on this, set the timer to activate every 30 minutes and only power the unit for 30 minutes. So here's the theory that with this running 30 minutes, it's going to reduce the temperature by 2.2 degrees, but we only need 1.75. And so the fridge will actually get extra power. And the reason we have to run it 30 minutes is I could only find a timer switch that had the little keys for 30 minute increments. So what I'm going to do, I've got a starting temperature here that you can see right here of 32 degrees inside. And I'm going to hook this sucker up. I'm going to run it for three hours. We'll see what the power draws down to. And then we'll make some mathematical calculations to extrapolate it. I'm also going to hook it up to a solar panel because this unit, the Egritech Sonic, offers something called pass-through charging. So that means as it pulls wattage in from the sun, it's going to pass that directly to the uh, unit that's drawing that power and keep from drawing down the internal battery as much as it otherwise would. So we'll see what that does in terms of making a difference as well. Well, let's get to work. Let me hook this thing up. We'll set a timer and we'll get going. Well, I'm ready to begin. This is sitting at 99% full right now. I've got my heavy duty three prong timer. So we'll plug this in. I just hooked it up on a power cycle and you can see it's only pulling 20 watts to keep the fridge running. And if it kept at that, it'd be good for 45 hours. Well, we know the, when the fridge cooling cycle kicks in, it will draw probably three to 400 watts until it cools everything down. Well, let's just wait the three hours and see where we end up. In the meantime, let's go look at the solar panel option. The Agritech uses a industry standard connector to the solar panels 
This is a 160 watt solar panel. It'll accept up to 200 watts. And right now in the middle of winter, I'm getting 99 watts of power coming in. Well, let me turn on the unit and let's see what's happening back there at the fridge. And right now it's still showing that I'm getting 99 in, which makes sense because once the fridge reaches its cooling equilibrium, you know, it's really not going to be drawn much at all. It's only as it warms up that the cooling mechanism in the refrigerator is going to kick in. So I can maximize that just like on the inside by hooking up one of these timers to here. I'll get the benefit of that 99 watts coming in during the 30 minutes that the refrigerator is not drawing. And then whatever it draws will be minus 99 watts. And again, extend the life of the Egrotec Sony Sonic 1200. Good deal if you have a solar panel. Done with the test and the results are absolutely amazing. I ended up running the test for four and a half hours and I opened the refrigerator in the middle to simulate the fact that you may have to get in and out of there at some point uh, during an extended period. When I opened the refrigerator, the temperature was 32, so the system was working properly. And interestingly enough, by the time I shut the door after getting something out, the temperature had climbed to 40 degrees. So that tells you how sensitive it is to opening and shutting. But anyway, let's get to the results. When I started the test, the uh, capacity of the unit had dropped down to 98%. And when I ended the test after four and a half hours, it was sitting at 78. So after four and a half hours, it had only consumed 20% of the battery power of the Edgitech Sonic. So that means that this thing could actually run for 22 and a half hours, four and a half times five, using the on and off technique that I just described. And if you don't have a solar panel, the unit comes with the ability to charge it off your cigarette lighter, if cars even have those anymore. So that is absolutely amazing. You could get essentially a whole day's power out of this unit just by doing the on and off technique. And if you charge it en route, you could probably go two days, depending on the amount of power that you're putting in it. I'll have a link down below where you can check it out for yourself. And they have solar panels as well that are the uh, higher capacity 200 watt that would charge this faster. Have you guys tried a test like this to see how long one of these power stations would last? If so, throw it down below. Thanks.